Good morning, folks. A quick announcement. Tomorrow's news will come very, very early in the morning because I'm flying out to Phoenix for the Electric Universe Conference. This is the second year I'll be speaking there, and both of my talks are on Sunday morning. I'll be discussing our studies of solar-induced seismicity, and I'll be doing a very short and brief introduction to Earth spots. Always fun. Also, since my flight overlaps the normal recording time for Fly on the Wall, the podcast was recorded yesterday and will be posted a day early here in a few hours over at suspiciousobservers.org. So, back to this. Half a dozen M-class flares, four interplanetary shock waves, radiation storms, KP-8 magnetic storms, and now we've got a fifth shockwave on the way. Big sunspot almost gone now, but before it left, it gave us that one last parting shot. A large M7.9 solar flare erupted from active region 2371. You can see the flash and the spreading ripple of the eruption sending the coronal mass ejection out into space. As initially reported yesterday, the CME is Earth-directed and will impact our magnetic field, likely tomorrow. NASA and NOAA both have updated their Enlil spirals, and they tend to agree, generally, on a latter-day impact tomorrow. That makes the CME slower than previous ones and unlikely to produce the same level storms. There is little chance of CME impact by the time I see you tomorrow morning early, but we'll have all the updates at spaceweathernews.com. Since the large flare yesterday, the protons have been rising and we're back at radiation storm levels. Solar wind from the fourth CME impact is calming down now, and the magnetic disruption, which peaked out at level 2 yesterday, has waned as well. Magnetometer showing another crazy disruption. I wonder if the sun broke that device. Anyway, we got double tapped in the gamma ray burst department. Both were southern hemisphere flashes. Since the big flare yesterday, things have calmed considerably with no more flares or CMEs from filaments. Tiny coronal hole incoming. The big sunspot grouping is departing now, and that will be on the backside of the sun very soon. Running out of time for more goodbye kisses, but even now, the CMEs are unlikely to be Earth-directed. Meanwhile, the primary eruption threat shifts to these plasma filaments. They're not huge, but they are Earth-facing, so it is what it is. Top quake of the last day is actually quakes. A swarm in New Zealand peaked out at 6.0 and has my attention today as a potential foreshock zone. Let's hope not. Top news includes one from NASA Goddard's Scientific Visualization Studio. May have outdone themselves this time. Exoplanet evidence at Beta Pictoris, and it's very entertaining. Cool stuff here. We also have an interesting article out about dead stars reviving dead planets. We have an important piece out from Carnegie Mellon on fixing some problems in science, many of which we've discussed over the years. This article is about what constitutes good science and what doesn't quite meet the bar. Our most recent examination in that specific realm is called Pause on Pausing the Pause. You can just Google that and look for the video. Up north, the Arctic is refusing to do its June melt. Normally, the ice dives down at this time of year, but it appears that will come late. Down south, the ice is at its second highest coverage extent on record, bested only by last year's records. Then, we're coming to weather where New Zealand had to throw away their old cold records book after this week. It got just crazy chilly there. Of course, we get the other extremes as well. The heat wave that ravaged India cropped up again in Pakistan. Hundreds now dead there. Clouds popping along the convergence line in the United States. This happens when the air masses collide and release energy as they convect and shift and create equilibrium in pressure, temperature, and moisture. By tonight, the line will shift eastward. How far is tough to say. Keep an eye on your forecasts. Despite some continued flood concerns in the Eastern Bloc, the top concern in Europe crests on to land from the Atlantic now. Big system is actually two Earth spots within the low node there. Down under, the watches are not as severe, but two curves based on southern wind drives carry the clouds, and they do indeed reach up to make landfall, so they're also worth mentioning. I've got your temperature, pressure, and precipitable water, the important current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.